Welcome to Bennett Fishing folks, I'm Josh. Today we're going to go over how to cast for spring lake trout. Now this is going to either be episode 3 or episode 4 of the spring lake trout series. If you want to go watch that whole series, the whole playlist link will be down below. I got this question a couple weeks ago, how do you cast for spring lake trout? They're one of the funnest things to tackle in the spring. They are up shallow, they are chasing bait like no tomorrow, they are starving, they just are aggressive and eat. Right now we're on Champlain and we're looking looking for isolated humps in warm bays. Now this bay is like 35 degrees, uh, 37 degrees it's warmed up to today since it's been like really sunny and beautiful and not windy. Um, other things you can do is you can actually cast for these guys from shore. If you're on Champlain, you, there's a causeway, like a walkway, it's a big rock thing, uh, or any sort of like jetty or pier or something like that, are prime areas for lake trout to come up and eat bait and pin them against those rocks. So look for those areas. If you're in a boat, I'll show you a picture right now of what a hump looks like. I'll kind of like, mine's color graded, so they pop when I'm driving around looking for these kind of things. That is crucial. So I'm also using LiveScope, and I'll go through my whole LiveScope setup real quick and show you how to cast for these guys and show you the techniques and the baits that we're using. Now this bait is completely destroyed. I've caught just on the jig head alone today at least 20 lake trout. Uh, but these are the 3 8 ounce heavy duty hook jig that I sell on my website, bendedfish.com. So let's go over the casting technique. It's a little, it's it's kind of like bass fishing. So we're using live scope. And so I'm using live scope plus right now with the 923XV GPS map head unit. And now that head unit is pretty expensive. And the reason I'm using that is so I can record this and make it a nice pretty image for you folks. Otherwise it gets a pretty weird looking if I'm filming the screen with the GoPro. I also have a trolling motor on the front that I'm using to push myself around the edge of this hump. You never want to go over the top of the hump unless you have to or the wind situation is making you do that. You will spook the fish. Right now we're only in like 18 feet of water. They can hear that boat. They can hear that trolling motor for sure. And if they're not in the mood to eat, they're in the mood to spook. So you got to be weary of that. I had no chasers there, but that's what my jig looks like. I have my gain turned up quite a bit uh, just because I want to see everything that I'm looking at today. So there's a lake trout. There's a couple lake trout right there at uh, 90 feet. Oh, there's a couple right there too. And they've been kind of glued to bottom today. So I'll show you the technique that I'm doing to get them to cooperate. And they haven't all cooperated today. But if you don't have Garmin Live Scope, what you can do is spot lock anchor off the southernmost point or whatever the the end point at which the wind's blowing you at, so you don't get blown onto it basically, and just keep fan casting onto it. So I'm gonna let my jig basically sink right to bottom, and then I'm gonna kind of slow twitch it off bottom. And hopefully you guys can see my jig there. Oh, he had it. He had it, he hit it, and now he probably won't hit it again. He got, he got hooks on that one. I've got another one at 80, five feet and now if you have live scope you're kind of used to casting this way casting directly to fish uh, i try to explain both ways for those people that don't have live scope that don't want to drop the three thousand dollars for the whole setup which is completely understandable and sometimes they won't even let it hit the bottom they'll just eat it on the way eat it on the way down so this one's not engaged with me or i miss my target But that first technique, send it out there. This is 3 8 You can use half if you want, um, or even quarter if you want. It just takes longer to sink. Uh, this bait I'm using right now has a very skinny profile, so it sinks pretty fast. I'm trying to find a fish to cast to here. Right there at 40. I cast out. Track it with live scope. Let it hit bottom and then I want to keep it off bottom. Oh, and I want to keep snap twitching it like that. Oh, he 
wanted it, but not the last moment there. Always chasing it right to bottom. In this particular lake, they don't like to eat it off bottom. I don't really know why, especially swim baits. Other lakes like Winnipesaukee and stuff like that, they'll chase it right to bottom and, and whale it. I feel like that's one right there at 60. Now, if you're casting from shore, I would just take a cast master, three eighths, uh, three quarter of an ounce, something like that, and bomb that out there. If you know it's kind of like a sandy bottom, let it hit bottom and just keep it right off bottom and rip it back. And do some weird moves with it. Do some twitches and stuff like that. Don't just stream it back because I've seen a lot of lake trout where they'll ignore something that's not acting erratic for the hundreds of lake trout that I've caught. <laughs> Most of them have been on like, I'm doing something silly with the bait or I'm twitching it. There's two 60 feet in front of me. And I want to cast right kind of on top of their heads actually. Come on. Oh. Got him. There we go. That's your classic chase right there. And that's your general Laker, Laker chase. They want to hunt this thing down. This is an okay size one. So there you have it. First Laker of the day, get that tail grab, support them underneath the belly there. And uh, there's the Laker. Now, you're going to want to do that over and over and over again until your arms get tired. It's so much fun having them chase like that. It is the best let's see if we can go for this this other one that's right there 60 feet Ooh, there's gonna be one right below me too and so if you were doing this blind without without live scope same thing cast it out there let it hit bottom That was sweet. Just caught another one. Let it hit bottom and you can just pop that thing back. You can start a chase every once in a while. They really, really love to chase stuff. I don't know what it is about lake trout, but seeing that on live scope, even 2D transducer, your normal one, like, like people use for ice fishing in the back of your boat. Um, it's just so exciting. Oh to see that you've fooled that fish into chasing your bait. Unlike, you know, a, a jig bite on a, on a bass is also good, like that thunk. These guys will also do that and they can, you know, get up to 35 pounds or something like that, which is the state record for both. They're all around the same New Hampshire, Maine and Vermont. So that's Champlain general size right there. That's a, that's a super healthy, super fat. 26 and he's got some lamprey bites on him. Going right back in. All right, let's go over gear real quick. I am using a Shimano X Pride. I know it's an expensive rod, but it's the it's the only really rod that I have that I love to death. Like it's got the perfect bend for everything. I use it for jigging lake trout. I use it for casting lake trout. Um, I use it for crappy too. It is the 270M. It is the seven foot medium. Uh, three sixteenths to a half ounce and I'm running a Shimano Vanford with 15 pound power pro high-vis braid a 12 pound 15 pound or 20 pound fluorocarbon leader I've been getting them to chase a lot today so they haven't been breaking me off knock on wood somewhere knock on wood and then I'm using my baits on benefish.com this is the three inch uh, swim bait that I just released it's glow in the dark and it's white so it's pearl white so it's kind of like see-through and that's to let that glow really really come through and i usually run a longer leader than this i've been lazy today i normally run like a 12 foot leader two arm lengths that's pretty much standard for what i for what i do and these fish are just relating to this because it's some place to ambush their prey they, they literally just sit on the edge of it and they wait for other bait fish and stuff to swim by 
and they just tackle them. And I've seen that with live scope today. It's really cool. Actually, lake trout have actually come to the surface today. I've seen them rocket off bottom and basically hit the surface today. Um, I'm going to try to get one on top water at some point, but that's not for you guys to do. That's, that's crazy folk like me. So islands are also a good... They're just an out of, out of water hump. Um, I have a couple islands behind me and they'll stack up around those as well. And I'm just trying to trolling around. Now the same technique, if you don't want to cast, you can just troll around humps as well. If you have trolling gear, I do have lead core and stuff with me in the boat. I just don't like trolling. It's boring in my mindset. So I'm keeping my jig close to bottom. And sometimes I won't even mark a lake trout with live scope. They'll just appear. Uh, because live scope's only as good as what it can see. So live scope only shoots in a 20 degree cone angle, just like most normal transducers. It's that straightforward distance, kind of the oval that it's shooting is, is what it's valued for. Uh, and I'll go over in, in the, below in the video, below the video, if you scroll up basically, if you're watching this on a phone, um, the links for all of this gear and the bait company, uh, benefish.com, and all the live scope stuff will be down below if you want to just purchase it through those Amazon links that help support the channel, of course. And last year, there was a lot more Lakers in this area. I'm not sure why they're not really stacked up here this year. Maybe because it's been warmer, they've pushed out. Uh, but basically, we have access to deep water, and those Lakers are coming up from deep water, trolling the, patrolling the area, eating, and then going back down. There actually is bait on the ledge once you get past about 60 70 feet there's owl wives and stuff that down there that they've been hammering i've been watching that on live scope too it's pretty cool 60 feet you'll get the hang of casting out to distance especially if you're using live scope but like i said i would just if you were didn't have spot lock or didn't have live scope i would just either auto anchor with spot lock on all four corners of the uh of the hump and kind of fan cast onto it. Here's one right here. Let's see if he wants to move. Oh, he's on. Oh, no, he's off. Oh, I didn't see him eat. I didn't feel it either. I was slack. Rarely, once you hook up like that, rarely will they come back. Um, what you can do is drop it to bottom. And they think they've stunned it. And now they think they got an easy meal after. Yep. Oh, I dropped him again. <laughs> Talking to you guys. Uh, rarely do they hit it again, except for that instance right there where he slurped it off bottom and I didn't I didn't feel it until I, I started reeling up and it was too late to set the hook. My bait's kind of destroyed, but if you feel like you're getting short striked, cut off like a half inch or so. Or if, you, if they keep stubbing you, like ripping the, biting the tail right off because they have sharp teeth. And uh, some people are like, oh, I got, I got a lot of swim baits. I got a lot, a lot of bass baits that are like this style, uh, this style swim bait, like little skinny ones that glow in the dark and stuff. You probably do. The problem is, is they're made out of softer plastic because they're made for bass. These are actually made out of harder plastic that are meant for, like it's a salt water mix or a uh, or a lake trout mix for species that have teeth in them. Now, I've, I've been telling you guys to like hit it, let it hit bottom and then twitch it back, twitch it back, start a little chase, twitch it back, start a little chase. I'm not doing that because I can see what my jig is doing and I can see that there's no fish near it right now. So I am, I am not concerned. But let's say if I was to work it back, I'll show you the technique. So I know this, I know this fish exactly 65 feet that way. I'll cast 65 feet that way. Always account for wind if there is wind. I've let it hit bottom. And I'm kind of snapping it back. I can do a little chase. And sometimes if you're just straight reeling like this, you'll feel like a tick, 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 like that. That's, the, that's them biting the tail of it and missing it. Couldn't have asked for a better hookup than that. 
that's one of the reasons you want a, a little more sensitive rod. And like I said, this is 260 or 280 dollar rod. Um, I've landed hundreds of lake trout on this thing with no issue. It's a smaller one. He's really beat up too. So this lake has lots of lampreys. That's what all those scar marks are. Poor little guy. But uh, going right back in. And like I, like I said, one of the reasons we are, we're casting instead of jigging for them is because we are so shallow. Like if I was to go on, I'm off the, still off the side of the hump. If I was to go on right on top of the hump with the trolling motor and if it was windy out, I would be spooking these fish. And so we are, we are getting to them with the least spooky method possible. I got a fish actually right below me there. See it? So I'm not gonna let it hit bottom. I'm gonna stay above him and see if he'll see it. Yep, here he is. Ooh. Oh no, I missed him. He comes back around, he's coming back around. No. That was a big fish too, folks. All right, there's a couple right there. So you can just barely see some flickering over there at 80. And there's a couple of rocks over there. Oh, there they are. Mm. I didn't, I saw a flicker of another one down there. And this is him. Small one. Just another beauty. And almost impossible to hold one in the small. And there's a couple more down there over at 50. Got him. Got him, got him. So much fun, guys. So much fun. Now they're not super drag pullers until they get into the, just over like the 30 inch, like 29, 30 inch ones start to pull drag. Unless you're using super light line. This is a wild fish here in Vermont. So they actually fin clip one of the fins on most of them. So this was a beauty, probably in that 27 inch range. Going right back in. So there's a couple down there at that 60 foot mark still. I can't see my jig right now, but I'm just twitching it back. They like those little twitches. Oh, he's all over it. There he is. Saw him last second. There's one other boat today that I've seen, that's it. There we go. And I, I have not really moved more than, I don't know, probably a hundred yards. I've literally traveled around this hump a bunch of times today and a couple other humps. They just stack up on those. Yeah, you'll find them lots of other places, but hopefully that teaches you guys how to cast for spring lake trout. It's better in the boat, you can do it from shore. Um, you're, you're into a lot of casts if you're doing it from shore. If you do have one of the Garmin live scope things, you can shoot that stuff from shore. It's pretty cool. I haven't really done it yet, but I've seen people do it. Uh, like I said, this is the Garmin live scope plus the 923 XSV GPS map. And this is, I'm running the, uh, fishing specialties pole off the side of my boat. So if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and visit BennettFish.com to help support the channel.